It did not go well. But he hit it off with President Eisenhower and came to be known as the unofficial White House chaplain. He befriended and vouched for JFK, helping him overcome anti-Catholic prejudice. He stuck with Johnson through Vietnam and Nixon through Watergate and offered his prayers and counsel to every commander-in-chief through the rest of the 20th century and into the 21st. Presidents need comfort that faith gives. And uh, Billy Graham was a great dispenser of comfort for me and for Barbara and for our family. And he just talked to me, never at me, never in a condemnatory way. It was amazing. President George W. Bush even credited Graham with helping him to quit drinking and turn his life around. God loves you. All the while, Graham continued to preach with crusades across America and around the world. Unlike fellow evangelists Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson, Graham steered clear of divisive issues such as abortion and the culture wars, preferring a gospel that would unite. We need to trust in God, and we need to put our faith in Him as a nation. There were, however, moments of controversy. He was caught on a Nixon White House tape talking about Jews having a, quote, stranglehold on the media, a comment he later said he deeply regretted. Even at the height of his fame, Graham lived a simple life in North Carolina with Ruth, his wife of 64 years, who died in 2007. The greatest need in the world today is the transformation of human nature to make us love instead of hate. At the time of his final crusade in 2005, he told ABC News he looked forward to the day he would meet God in heaven. I said to the Lord, why did you choose me? I came from a farm. I never dreamed that I'd be preaching to people in different countries. And I'm going to ask the Lord, why did you choose me? Because I believe I was chosen. To Billy Graham, only why one opinion mattered. I want to hear one person say something nice about me, and that's the Lord. When I face him, I want him to say to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Billy Graham, a towering figure in America, as we said, one of the most, one of the major evangelical figures of the last century. His influence get, uh, stretched for so long. I want to bring in Dan Harris, who, who just did that piece. And Dan, remind everybody, I mean, of course, uh, Billy Graham's influence lasted for so long, but he was such a towering figure in the middle of the last century. A, a towering figure, not only in politics, but in American culture. You know, he really... Um put evangelicalism on the map in many ways, and his crusades were watched, uh, attended uh, by hundreds of thousands of people and watched by millions more on, on what was then the relatively no, new technology of live television. Um, but again, it was politics where he had this repeated influence being you know, known as the pastor to presidents and, and uh, speaking with them at their darkest hours often and uh, and almost always uh, we those conversations were confidential we don't even know what kind of support he was giving yeah in, nonpartisan in his approach befriended Republican and Democratic presidents uh, alike and as you pointed out in your piece his message was always to unify uh, his son Franklin Graham still active uh, as a preacher also in politics taking a somewhat different path Yes, Franklin Graham has been uh, quite a bit more polarizing, and uh, uh, I think it's safe to say more strongly associated with what is often referred to as the religious right or conservative Christian. Um, and as it has become embroiled in, over the years, uh, um, more than a few uh, public controversies, uh, his dad really tried to stay away from that and wanted to be seen as, and I believe was seen as, largely above the fray. Evangelist Billy Graham has died at the age of 99. We're going to return now to our regular program. For many of you, that is Good Morning America. First, we'll have a complete wrap-up tonight on World News Tonight with David Muir. This has been a special report from ABC News.